my name is Megan Waters. I'm here as Armstrong's Community Marketing Manager with Elizabeth Smith of Accutech Precision Aerospace. Thank you for being here with us, Elizabeth. Oh, I'm excited. Yes, tell us a little bit about your role here at Accutech. I'm the President and CEO of Accutech, okay. uh, and um, I'm very excited about uh, what we're doing here in the community and our uh, growth prospects going forward. Very good, and what is Accutech? So Accutech originally stood for Accurate Technology. It was started as a uh, just a simple machine shop in a garage in downtown Sagertown and has since expanded to be the largest industrial employer in Crawford County. Wow, and what exactly do you manufacture? So uh, Accutech Precision Aerospace manufactures precision aerospace components and sub-assemblies for a lot of the systems integration suppliers in the aerospace and power generation markets. So we make critical parts for a lot of the fuel systems, hydraulic systems, landing gear systems, parts that move um, in uh, land-based power generation, which are aircraft engines on the ground, as well as in engine and flight control, fuel control, different control systems on aircraft. Okay, and can you tell us who any of your notable clientele maybe? Yeah, so it's generally not the, the prime contractors, right? So we're supplying the system suppliers. So a lot of Fortune 500 companies that folks might know, like Parker Hannafin, Lord Corporation, right up the road here in Pennsylvania, um, as well as Woodward, Safran, um, and, and those uh, large multinational systems design houses for aerospace and power generation markets. Wow, so there's some really specific and important things happening here right in Meadville. Absolutely. So if anybody has flown Southwest Airlines, you stop at the end of the runway, you're welcome. Those are <laughs> a lot of our components in the piston assembly, uh, landing gear, as well as thrust, re thrust reversing systems. Okay. And what's the mission with all of this work that you're doing? Um, the mission here is uh, ultimately to uh, offer fantastic, long-standing careers in a thriving growth industry uh, like aerospace, space, and, and other uh, high growth markets uh, right here in you know, rural America uh, to go into the next, uh, uh, the greatest technologies of manufacturing, future state manufacturing, industry 4.0, X.0, mm -hmm. all kinds of latest uh, quality specifications, um, automation, design of tooling, um, all of that right here in, in, uh, in rural Pennsylvania and rural South Carolina. Right. What you're saying is all of these industries that are moving forward, uh, travel as we become more globalized and automation, all of those things are at the forefront here in Meadville and in Crawford County and Accutech as a whole. Absolutely. We're our, our customers' long-term problem-solving partner, right? So they have, uh, they have production needs and we're there to be their production arm uh, and investing in technologies to continue to compete globally, right? So we complete, compete every day with companies in India, in Mexico, in China um, uh, with uh, American ingenuity and a can-do attitude. <laughs> and how did the company begin? You mentioned in a garage. Yeah, so uh, Accutech was co-founded by a couple of Allegheny graduates um, and uh, then uh, my dad actually took over in the early 90s when uh, the other founder spun off Chip Blaster, which is right across the street. Um, and uh, so really grew Accutech from a machine shop to a, uh, an aerospace supplier. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, to reflect that aerospace uh, know-how and, and market, we actually changed the name of Accutech Precision Machining to Accutech Pre Precision Aerospace in 2015. Very cool. And, and why Meadbelt? Why Northwest Pennsylvania? Um, originally, uh, you know, uh, the Allegheny College being in, in, in Meadville. The founders of Accutech went to Allegheny College, but uh, Meadville, Crawford County, is a fantastic location to have world-class manufacturing, right? So historically, Tool City, USA, in Meadville, um, there's a broad uh, expanse of very knowledgeable tool makers. Um, so we're doing production machining, um, but we use a lot of fixturing, a lot of tooling, um, and uh, those, those uh, knowledge bases, as well as kind of rural agriculture, agriculture, right? Farmers are incredibly resourceful and creative um, and hardworking, right? So that, that uh, employee base is fantastic. Um, so we, we love that creativity um, and uh, we put that to work right here. Nice. 
the way to really capitalize on the local workforce mm -hmm. and, and make that work for you. And I know here at AccuTech it's extra special because you kind of pay that back to your employees by being an employee-owned company. So can Absolutely. you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so it was really important to me uh, as a second generation owner that, you know, why do I get the benefit of this equity when the folks who have been working here their entire career, they should get a return on their investment of their career here. Um, so uh, giving 25% of the company to the employees uh, a couple years ago really allows us to um, ensure that the return on investment uh, the, the, the profits that we're generating here in, at Accutech go to the employees and to the community that, that help generate those, mm -hmm. um, rather than external investors that you know, have yachts in New York or something like that. Um, you know, the, the folks who are producing the product here um, get to benefit from the return on their investment here. And just circling back, I know you're you're headquartered here in northwestern Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. but I understand you've expanded since your beginnings. Yeah, so we actually have four facilities. So we have our Sagertown facility, which was set up right off of I-79 in 1996, mm -hmm. um, we, and has expanded four times since then right there at that site. Uh, we have our M1 facility right here in the former uh, American Viscose site here in Fifth Ward. Uh, and uh, we have over uh, 250,000 square feet here in Meadville now. Uh, that was, uh, we moved down here in 2007 to expand down here. Um, then in early 2000s, we set up a facility co-located to, to a major customer of ours in rural South Carolina. Uh, and then in 2018, we actually expanded down the hall with uh, additional 100,000 square feet uh, that we refer to as our M2 facility that was set up for a major defense contract that our customer, it was not renewed, so we completely revamped it and now it is our landing gear center of excellence where we make a variety of uh, components for uh, landing gear and braking systems. So it's a pretty extensive operation. How many employees in total does that encompass? Uh, as of today, uh, probably two more than yesterday. Uh, so <laughs> we have uh, almost 500 employees wow. across all locations, um, but we are anticipating significant growth. We really want to grow that employee base by 20% here to be able to really double our revenue. Um, we have uh, a tremendous amount of equipment, of equipment here, outstanding equipment, uh, you know, a majority of that equipment, the average age of our equipment is about five years old. So it's new, it's uh, extremely advanced, a lot of automation in place. Um, so so as we unlock more of our uh, capacity uh, by automation and staffing up, um, we'll be able to double our, our revenue here uh, within the next five years. That's great. It sounds like there's a lot of forward thinking happening, um, not only with the equipment and your growth um, and your employee ownership, just from all facets, kind of how can you make this more sustainable for uh, the company, but also for the employees and everyone involved, your, as well as your customers. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. So Accutech has four philosophies, right, that have, have led us to continue to grow over the last 35 years. Uh, the first one is always be lucky. Um, there are three components to that. We prepare to be lucky, we recognize when we're lucky, and we act on it. Uh, the second is we wake up paranoid. We compete globally, uh, and every day somebody is out there trying to steal our business. So we constantly have to innovate, which means that third philosophy, we embrace change. Um, so we're willing to try new ways of doing things, whether we've had a part for four months or for 20 years, we are looking to make it more efficient and more effective and, and satisfy our customer needs. Um, and fourth is we recognize adversity as opportunity. Uh, the pandemic was, was a major source of adversity for us. 40% of our business stopped April of 2020. Um, we've been able to emerge even stronger, taking that opportunity to uh, consolidate our, our work from 12,000 different parts into 59 distinct part families. So as we're growing, we not only have the employee stock ownership plan, to ensure that the employees benefit from that growth, but we have a much more focused sales strategy that will allow us to expand in a, in a really profitable way for, for the community and for our employees. That's really exciting. It's encouraging to know that you're looking ahead uh, and looking out for, like I said, everyone as a whole, the community backing this uh, from its humble beginnings yeah. all the way to its today's growth and into the future. So that's pretty exciting. I want to give credit to the awesome suppliers uh, that we have in this area. 
Um, so just really excited to have a lot of local partners as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have fantastic uh, fixturing suppliers here in the area. Um, we work with a number of, of those tool and die shops, mm -hmm. right? We're not tool and die. We're production uh, machining, um, but we work with a lot of tool and die shops who help make our tooling. We also work with you know, folks like Greenleaf on inserts. Um, we work with Peter's Heat Treat on, on heat treating. Um, they just recently got Bell certified, right? So we're really working to elevate the entire area um, and bring folks along with us in our success. There's a lot of really exciting stuff going on in this area. Um, the issue is that we're kind of down in the supply chain. So um, we manufacture stuff that's going to space, that's going to Mars, um, but we can't necessarily necessarily talk about specifics. Um, so I know that we're not the only ones doing exciting stuff in the area, mm -hmm. um, and I want folks to understand that manufacturing in Northwest PA is uh, just at the forefront of, of what's possible here in the world. So I'm very excited about uh, our prospects and about the enthusiasm and the fantastic teams that we have here. Absolutely, and you mentioned the team is growing even as we speak, literally. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are the current job needs or that you project coming up in the next year or so? Um, so uh, as, as we look at uh, more automation and using a lot of technology, um, there's a, the kind of more roles that, that work collaboratively with robots. Um, and we're looking more and more about the, the interface of computer science and uh, machining. Um, so there's just so many variables that, that folks have to handle um, with uh, production machining, looking at more um, broader processes. So we have all kinds of, uh, I mean, the machinist role is just transformed into kind of a really great um, a, thinking about uh, production and repeatable processes, right? So we're not just crafting one-off uh, things. We're actually setting up um, processes that can run unattended. We're using statistical process control. Um, so those, those uh, we're not just uh, having to inspect each part, but looking at the system as a whole and making sure that the machines are doing work for us. Um, so with that, there's a lot more um, handling of a variety of multi-axis machines, of uh, working with robotics, um, about having a process with, with tool life management so that during the day, we set all of this process up, hit a button, and then it works while we're not here. And then when we come in in the morning, oh, there we go, we got all our parts and we set up for another day. Um, so that's really how, how this is evolving. So we have a ton of uh, positions open in production uh, machining um, and production management, as well as uh, in inspection, right? So uh, with aerospace, uh, quality is absolutely critical. We make a lot of flight critical product. Um, so we're using statistical process control and checking down to uh, well under a tenth of one, in, uh, one thousandth of an inch. Um, so uh, quality requirements are extensive, so a lot of quality openings, uh, a lot of uh, production, and then post-processing, right? So we do more than just machining here. We do paint, we do assembly, um, we do non-destructive testing. So all of those post-processing, um, we're really staffing up in those areas. Um, some finishing, um, really tight surface finishes required for space applications, um, making sure that all, uh, all corners of the metal are uh, to the various specific tolerances that our customers require. So there's some finishing um, hand deburr operations that we still do, and, and that's a, a growing field. So all of, all of those positions, as well as project management, we're expecting to be able to, as we unlock a lot of this unattended capacity, we need to bring in a lot more work. Um, so kind of managing those new programs, um, programming, right? So again, talk about the interface between computer science and machining. Um, a lot of what we do is computer programming using million dollar computers to cut metal. It's awesome. Um, so folks that, that are uh, excited about that, um, we'll train people, right? So we have a new machinist training program um, where 20% of our machinists are homegrown. We've, we've started them entering through this new machinist training program. Um, and then uh, folks who have attitude and aptitude, we will train in all, all of these roles, essentially, from square one, as long as uh, people are hungry, willing to learn, creative, um, and uh, uh, really interested in learning, mm -hmm. we, we have a, a space for them. I love that. Attitude and aptitude will take you far. Absolutely. So, well, I'm so glad to hear that, that you're, again, and I keep saying it, you're developing your corner of the community mm -hmm. um, through these opportunities, through the ownership, uh, employee ownership, and seeing the community thrive. So we really appreciate that. Um, and I know that 
Uh, you've had some recent successes and re recognitions. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, we're really proud of the team here. We, uh, through the pandemic and as we emerged from the pandemic, we haven't lost a step in terms of our on-time delivery and our quality. And we were recognized, uh, we actually had a, a, a pretty senior manager fly over from France um, to mm -hmm. award us a, a supplier of the year for Safran landing systems. Mm -hmm. So that was for 100% on-time delivery and 100% quality for an entire year. Um, in the midst of ongoing supplying, supplier challenges and you know, uh, a lot of aerospace demand fluctuation, mm -hmm. um, we have tremendous customer partners, right? So we're not out there quoting any work. Um, we work with very specific, outstanding customer partners who hold us to a very high standard um, and allow us to learn from the best and um, continue to improve year over year. Very good. Congratulations on... on an international recognition. Yeah. That's pretty fantastic. Uh, and just something a little interesting about Accutech. If you've ever been here, you will notice that it's a uh, it's not black and white. There's a little bit of color around here. So tell us a little bit about the red and the green in Accutech. Yeah, so uh, I mean, ultimately, uh, it's about you know, a high energy space, right? So um, this, this maroon kind of floors, right? We have maroon floors everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and that is just to kind of m make the space pop a little bit, right? So not boring, mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, just kind of like a high energy space. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, that green really re re reflects opportunity. Right, so talking about you know our, our continued growth aspirations, our, our, we we strive to be the most respected supplier in the aerospace industry. Um, and uh, when you think about green, you think about growth, and uh, you think about opportunity, and that's that's uh, that's that's the world we live in. Great. Well, it was great to have you. Thank you so much for meeting with us and letting us learn a little bit more about this fantastic company uh, and Cornerstone in Meadville. Oh. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Again, I'm Megan Waters with Elizabeth Smith, and uh, this is Armstrong's Community Neighborhood Channel. Thank you. Mm -hmm.